Welcome to SRPG Plus, it's your guy Kapakai. Today I just wanted to talk about my main impressions with the demo that Square Enix brought for Project Triangle Strategy. First, I just want to start with combat. After spending a few hours playing the demo, I'm happy with the combat so far. The more I play, the more I wish I had more access to customization and just more time with the game. And also just so I can make the units fight exactly how I would like and just kind of make sure their skills are what I want for that battle. Just a lot more customization which will come with the full game. But what they do let you do in the demo, it is very fun. Friendly fire is off and it's a real game changer, allowing more beginner friendly strategies. So for those who are new to the genre, don't worry, there are mechanics that kind of make it an easier transition for this type of game. The main weapon types, they all seem pretty good and they all have their own unique uses. Uh, just for example, there's the things like the sword, the knife, and I feel like the, the main like damage dealing weapons for physical attacks will just be like the sword, the axes, the spears, those types of one to two handed weapons, not the knives, the short stuff. But one cool thing that the thief can do during combat is they can attack and kind of like do two actions. So even though they don't do as much damage with that one attack, they still get to kind of catch up with that double action. I like the magic, but one of my main criticisms is you can't really generate TP fast enough. I saw myself using a lot of TP recovery items, just speed it up so my mages could be uh, useful quicker and aren't just sitting around so frequently. And one cool thing that you can do with the terrain when you're using magic is, let's say there's a puddle on the ground nearby an enemy and then another enemy is in that puddle as well. Well, if you use lightning, you can shock both those enemies using AoE with a single hit attack just if you uh, time it right and just with the terrain and stuff but just make sure you set it up properly because the stuff can the terrain will like change it turn by turn and it may disappear the puddle may evaporate by the time you actually get ready with your setup also when you use that terrain to your advantage you can uh, burn enemies like that are in this certain area that you can set on fire shows that with the second battle if you choose to defend Roland um, so that's a that's a very cool uh, strategy and also once you burn that land it's impassable so it kind of makes your enemies get funneled into one direction really makes the fight a lot easier This game is filled to the brim with nods to quest and early squaresoft games And these were developed and written and produced and kind of just the mastermind behind it all He was Yasumi Matsuno uh, just really a legend who solidified the Final Fantasy tactics tactics ogres ogre battle series I just can't wait to see what else he does a lot of those old devs that worked on these old and ancient RPGs They're kind of just chilling and it's like that's a lot of talent just going to waste and next I want to go into difficulty The two battles can be pretty challenging for those who are new uh, to the genre of uh, SRPGs once you realize that there is no friendly fire and you can just damage your enemies and AoE and not affect your allies. It makes the battles go by a lot quicker. I thought that was an issue, so when I first started the demo, I was struggling with it on the second battle. Once I realized that, I was just messing them up with the magic. And also, since you have an ally there, it makes setting up the follow-up attacks pretty easy. Uh, those are really cool because then it kind of gets like a jump mechanic. Or I guess in Final Fantasy Tactics Advance, it would be called the combo. But basically just two units um, on your team standing uh, either adjacent or across from each other surrounding the unit, you can attack them. And it, and it really helps stack the damage up so you can get more out of your turns. The first battle is straightforward. Just make sure that you protect Roland. Any other ally can die and there is no permadeath. So an ally falling in battle, it isn't the end of the world. Just make sure on the second battle that you torch the town uh, to funnel the enemies, like I was saying earlier, um, straight to you. And it makes a straight path so you can get to Avlora the boss for that battle. And it should be pretty easy. So if you're having a difficulty before, try that. And also, um, just while I'm here, first, remember to like and subscribe. But also, just check the Nintendo eShop and uh, download that demo if you haven't tried it out. The game is very fun. The combat was pretty deep. I want to learn how to uh, manipulate the puddles to get those chain reactions because I, I saw that it was possible and I did it once but it was really hard to set up so I just want to make sure that I can really get that timing down. Um, overall I really like the combat. And third I want to talk about the story. The story so far um, and we really got just kind of a sneak peek this being a demo only really going over like 
couple chapters. It is pretty good. The paths and the multiple outcomes seem to be the main uh, draw. Huge inspiration taken from Tactics Ogre, Let Us Cling Together, the blueprint for the legendary Final Fantasy Tactics. The scene with Serenoa and his father feels like it was plucked out of Final Fantasy Tactics, with Ramza and his father, Lord Bayou. The story seems to be a good base, but I hope the story is more than a Final Fantasy Tactics successor. I hope this has its own take on the genre and earns its own acclaim. Overall, can't really say too much since this is a demo, but I feel like this is a good start and they really could flesh it out, especially with all the time they have before this game comes out. Fourth, the UI and HUD. After playing both Bravely Default 2 and Octopath Traveler, I hope they make the menus interface a just pop. I feel like in Octopath Traveler and with uh, Project Triangle Strategy, the menus just are just these like opaque, like you can kind of see through, it's kind of transparent black boxes with the generic font that's kind of like just all throughout the whole series of games developed by these the same people like with Octopath. And I just feel like it would really give it more um, uniqueness and kind of make it more uh, memorable and just last longer in your head. It's kind of like just an iconic menu like Final Fantasy 7 or Secret of Mana. Just how, just how things just change and how they can, the developers really just can do whatever they want. It's kind of their playground. They can make it and it can kind of be refreshing experience. So I hope they do something like even in Bravely Default 2, it's nothing crazy, but the menu looks a million times better than what they show for Project Triangle Strategy. So I hope that gets improved. And fifth, let's go over the negatives. During combat, some of the tiles they can get pretty hard to see. Like there's a light blue and then this purplish blue and then a regular blue. They kind of all stack together and it just makes it hard to tell where you're going. And when you're actually selecting who you're attacking or where you're going, that that has to be perfect. So there's no misplays because these games can get hard enough as it is. You don't want the game to actually like be the issue. You want it to be something that you can work on and improve just like with your actual strategy. And some of the text, for this also being a game that can be played on handheld, it's pretty freaking small. Um, it makes it hard to see when you're reading the story. It, it kind of just makes you want to use like the auto advance for the text. But I, I do want to just read everything that's going on just so that I can really comprehend it and just deeply learn it. But they really got to make sure, and this is with a lot of Switch games, that this game, this console is hybrid. So it's not just on consoles and people aren't just going to be on a big TV. It does need to be bigger font so people can actually read it on the handheld. And especially for the Switch Lite players, they have no other option. And uh, with the demo, they are going to take a lot of feedback and hopefully improve the game like they did with Oct Octopath Traveler and uh, Bravely Default. So I have very high expectations. This game is kind of just like a miracle for me. It's really just a birthday present, just to be honest. Like, I never really thought that we'd get another game like Final Fantasy Tactics. And to see that we're getting a whole nother new potential series, it's it's really good to see and it makes me happy as an SRPG fan. Well, this was SRPG Plus. It's been your guy Kapakai. Peace.